You know, it's not a slam dunk all the time. You never know what's gonna happen. You know, the more days you spend out there, the more you learn, the more you see. That, that's what's so exciting about it, is just you never know what you're gonna come across. All right, you get my lure back, Scott. You get a chance? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. So winter's coming. Bait fishing's getting tougher and tougher, but we can't go fishing without it. And we wanted to uh, hammer some tunas. And you said, let's try this 300 foot wreck I got. Yeah. That's one of the few times we really didn't run no, west. No, we just stayed close. We stayed close. We went up to the east a little right. bit. Um, there's, there's a few wrecks up, up there to the east, and uh, what we did was we anchored down. It was 300 feet of water. Yeah, we, that had to be, because we used all 600 feet, and we needed a little bit more. Yep, yep. You told me we we're going to, like, the word on dock was that there was a nice school tunas and the, the, the wrecks right out front, but it was deep. So uh, we had the sand anchor, 35 foot of chain, and all 600 feet of uh, anchor line, plus another 200 feet ready to click on. But when you're in 300 feet, uh, what is your, uh, is 600 feet what you shoot for? Or? Of rope? Well, that's yeah. just how they sell it, it's a 600 foot roll. So normally what I do is I cut it at, at four mm -hmm. and then keep another 200 foot shot in the in the boat. So if, if, if I'm in, you know, say 150 or 180, I use that 400 foot shot. And then if I get out to that deeper water, I throw that 200 on. Now You, you want to be, you don't have too much line left over if you get a sail. Well, yeah, you got to throw it over the side, get on the ball. But also in 300 foot, that's not the right uh, uh, ratio only 600 foot, mm -hmm. but uh, with having that long amount of chain on that I used, works for you. It, it worked out. You yeah. know, so we were able to hold the bottom there. It wasn't too awful windy. It was actually kind of nice, and um, we got set up and we started throwing bait, and we actually started seeing some tunas popping here and there, and, and, and it felt like everything was going to get going. Yeah, the current was supposed to be west, and it start it started to trickle to the east. Yep. The bait wasn't like the bait was everywhere. Yeah. We couldn't really um, dial in on it. We did get the tunas popping, but we couldn't hold their attention. Yeah. Tuna. Ooh, black fin. Wanna chop him up? Yeah. All right. Whatever you wanna do, buddy. I'll put him in the bucket. I wanna see you do a... Uh, or do you want me to let him go? You we let need... him go? I wanna see you make a, a bottom rig. And put half of him down. Bottom rig's ready to go. I'm gonna put him down. Get a Warsaw. Thank you, sir. Need a little fresh bait. A nice wahoo bait right there, buddy. <sighs> All right, let him calm down and I'm gonna chop him up. Look at that thing. It's like a, it's like a black fin, only smaller. This is what the majority of people catch with feathers nowadays. Luckily, we have live bait. We don't need to mess with the small ones. You know, we were hoping to really get these tuners going, but unfortunately, uh, when we did get a good fish on, um, it got eaten by a shark. Um, it's, it's, you know, but you know, hey. those darn sharks. Yeah. You know, I, I get so angry Keep at the bull sharks, and then you introduced me to a whole new species. Yeah. <laughs> I was giving them, I was cursing the bull sharks, and it wasn't. Of course. Yeah. It's all smoked up when you see it like that. When it gets all smoked up like that, that's some rubbing on that shark skin. It's almost like somebody took sandpaper and just kind of sanded down the line. Daily. All right. That's actually, what it is. Coming like through. Sandpaper. You want to send that on down there? That's beautiful, buddy. Butterfly tuna. That is beautiful. Cause tail out. They won't spin real bad. See, maybe if we start fishing for sharks, we'll start catching other things. Without that. Cause when we're not fishing for sharks, we catch sharks. Mm -hmm. I've actually caught big muttons on those little bonitas before. Oh yeah. Well, here we go. Come on. There we go. That's a big old nurse shark. We're saw, baby. Floating up. He's not floating. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Sim Rants Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad. Go with confidence. Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. Shimano. Bubba Blade, the ultimate lifestyle. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Power Pro, CDEP, and Costa. Still there? Yeah, just waiting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What you got, buddy? Making some strange sounds. He lives on the bottom. Oh, he doesn't even know he's hooked. What do you got, buddy? Uh, Probably a king, I guess. Uh, I was jigging the old cold sniper. Ah! Uh, nice Warsaw, bro. Get him up here. That's a Warsaw, I can tell by the fight. Could never be a shark on the bottom. They're up here on the top eating our tunas. Uh, <laughs> well, Starting to make me feel bad for you, keep making those sounds. <laughs> That's a big old nurse shark. We're all, baby. Floating up. He's not floating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a Jewfish. Oh, look here. What you got? A real one. The black fin. Yeah. I'll fill three jars, buddy. Yeah. That's how I rate them now, by the jar. <laughs> This feels like a little better tuna here, Scott. You got him down deep. I think I got an eel. <laughs> Not a monster, but that's where I'll it take starts. Him on that uh, cold sniper there. A lot of people think they got to have all that live, baby. These, <laughs> these lures right here are actually. That's a good fish there, Steve. I'll be okay. <laughs> Uh, no, don't you do it. Lures are actually really good for tunas, you know? They like it moving. You're marking tuna fish down deep and you the can tunas drop will get thing. in different la layers and sit yeah. there for a while. They're not always they on the top. They still always want to eat. You just got to get it right in the front of their face. Yep. Uh, yeah, that thing does the trick every time. All uh, right, where are we going with this? Up in the big box? Yes, sir. Port side opening. Now, the beauty of this tough on my back, but there's a two-speed reel. I've switched it to one-to-one -to -one so I can use all my energy pulling the rod up, not turning the handle, which is a beautiful thing. I can use two fingers to turn that handle. Let me show you real quick. If I go back to a regular speed, how hard is to turn the handle? I didn't get anything. Back to one-to-one, -to -one, boom, boom, boom. Use your tackle. It was designed to help, not hinder. You knew instantly when um, I went down for the Warsaw Grouper that I had a sandbar, just because I had a really heavy bent pole and it wasn't trying to uh, get to the wreck. It was kind of just offering resistance only. Because mm -hmm. you've caught them for so many years. I mean, I don't catch those in Marathon. It's, it's bull sharks or hammers. Um, is that a, a, you call it a sandbar, but it's a deep wreck fish? I, I, it's Where just a deep, it's a deeper water fish. I think it's anywhere, you know, outside the edge of the reef. Um, I have seen a few on the reef, but very rarely. But most of the time they're in that, you know, anywhere from 150 to 400. And that's where they seem to reside, at least down here. And they're really beautiful with their big pecs and that tall dorsal. And they have a pretty nice smile when they come up, but. They're not snapping and uh, stuff. It's just, you know, let me go and I'll be on my way. <laughs> yeah, there was, um, you know, it's funny because I, I, was, I was trying to keep the morale up because the only thing we got going on 
is the sharks at the time, you know? Yeah, and when you put a time in to get anchor in 300 feet of water, you're uh, you're there, you're committed for a while. You gotta, till you figure it all out. Right, and and what I did was I, I tried to keep your morale up <laughs> and, uh, and just kept saying, you know, the next bait will be a Warsaw, you know, which, that's where they would be. You knew it wasn't gonna happen, <laughs> but I had a great time. Uh, I had a great time just, you know. Egging me on. Egging you on to make you think. And, and, and I knew you weren't thinking it, but it was just, it made for a good uh, morale lifter. Color up. Maybe you got some cobias with it. That'd be awesome. I think it's a sawfish. <laughs> <laughs> A shark, but yeah, it's not it's a nurse shark. No, it's a sandbar. Sandbar, take him away. Be ready. All right, I'm ready. I like to call these snagglepuss. Well, they're cooperative. That's what I like about them. Big Look old that. dorsal, big peck. Uh, that's a circle. I'm going to cut him real close. You got it? Yeah. Put one hand on the bonita. That bait's good. I'm not putting my hand anywhere near that thing. <laughs> 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 Hold on, I got it with the gap. All right. Uh, Save the bait. You what do you mean? We go back down there again? Watch your ankle. I'm not moving. Docile for as big as these things are, you know? Yeah. All right. There you go. Swim, swim away, buddy. He's good. He just got to get turned. He's got to get right side plane. up. Yeah. He's going right back to where he came from. Thanks for saving that bait. I guess I got to do it again. <laughs> yeah, you did it so smoothly. Uh, Usually you got to get through the sharks to get the Warsaws. Hey, man. <laughs> I got to get through the sharks. Because I heard that's what you said. <laughs> Thanks, bud. All right, I'll twist up one more wire. All right, you get my lure back. Give you a chance. Well, that's not going to happen. Hey, this is Cam Scott Walker taking a few minutes to talk to you about Mercury's new Active Trim. Mercury Active Trim is a GPS speed-based automatic engine trim system brought to us by Mercury Marine. The Active Trim system will respond to the weather conditions around you, improving performance and fuel economy. A huge plus. So now, you'll no longer have to worry about how to set the trim as you accelerate and set your cruise speed. It'll do it for you. I know a lot of guys that own boats that don't even use their trim unless it's coming on off the trailer. But it's really important to use your trim and tilt to level the boat off and save on fuel once you get going. More motor in the water is more fuel going out of your tank. Active Trim also does the same in reverse. When you slow down or make a turn, it returns the motors to their proper position for docking the boat, navigating a channel, fighting a fish. Still want to do it yourself? Active Trim is immediately disabled as soon as you use your own trim switches. Active Trim is going to allow you, the boat operator, to relax. No knowledge of trimming is necessary. It takes care of it all, making for a better overall boating experience. Remember, go boldly with Mercury Marine and Active Trim. Next color. Show some excitement, Scott. That's what do you what got? They, that's what they say. What I'm working got? on it. I'm trying to catch a sail over here. Same thing I told you a while ago. Your belly hurts. <laughs> that. Rod's too soft. Back. Rod's too light for the fish that I have on it. Okay. Dead weight. You know, what's amazing, Scott, is that that, uh, with the technology, right? With these rods and these reels and this braid. I'm always power amazed. Power Pro line, you can accomplish those things. You can catch these monster fish on tiny little outfits. So the outfit was not at all cumbersome, but uh, it was a little bit light. You know, it was, it was kind of, the pole was lacking the, the power to lift him up um, if you were actually gonna do multiple of those fish. But with the, with the technology and the, and the equipment we have nowadays. Well, I just wanna know what, you caught that fish on the jig. The, you hooked the no, tuna. I had a tuna or something, right. And he ate that pretty darn quickly, and then the, the hook was transferred to his chops. That, that spinning rod was maxed out, a 100-pound fish oh, for 30 minutes. I mean, you were uh, starting to groan a little bit there at the end. 
Okay, dokey. Your knowledge of the sandbar shark is extensive. Okay. I think he's bigger than yours. <laughs> oh, he's mad. Oh, yeah. Come here, you little turd. All right, you get my lure back, Scott. You get a chance. Well, that's not going to happen. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Where's your thingy? Right here. You know this one's been around. Look at all the, you know, people leave hooks in them. See the rust stains around there? Mouth? Yeah, big hooks. Come around. Oh, okay, as soon as you get all that leader, I'm gonna back off a little bit. Hold on. You got him yet? No. Okay, give me a little. He's good sinking. There we go. You got him? See, over the years, you're getting more comfortable with the shark, Scott. I just keep, don't like see it. him in the launch mode. Here, get your hook. In the sleepy mode? Get your hook. Oh, look at the little tricky fold. <laughs> I'll get it out for you. Come on. Here, take the de-hooker. <laughs> well, you put all that work. Oh, you turd. I just want you to you hook No, back. not you, the shark. Boom! Oh, all right. That's teamwork. Look at that hook. Perfect. Get back to work. Right, Start jigging yeah, it. I'm, I'm gonna wait a few minutes before I <laughs> drop that thing. You wait a few minutes. Perfect hook. I like this. This wreck's really turned out to be quite a party. It's a strong hook. Usually a lot of times you put the de-hooker on it and you yank on it, that's when you straighten the hook out. But man. Exactly. Okay, I'm gonna take five. <laughs> it's sandbar Sunday. Sandbar Sunday. <laughs> Hey, you want to see more of Into the Blue? Well, you can. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even come on over to our YouTube channel. See you there. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, has been brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. West Marine for your life on the water. Scales, every degree of water. Mercury Marine, go boldly. And by Ameritrail, Spear One Charters, and Ocean's Edge Resort and Marina. You take this sandbar pole and put it up under the gunnel. <laughs> the horse all rod you <laughs> I bumped my rear. <laughs> a little <laughs> difference. Hey, there's a big, the big ones are right there. To your left. Oh! Oh, almost got the pelican. <laughs> a lot of chum to get these guys going today. <clears throat> Is that a one canner or a two canner? That's a four canner. What? Yeah, man. Four canner. We just kind of went ahead and kept doing our thing and dropping to the bottom, and those sharks kept biting every time, even to the point, you know, another thing that's really you unique. You caught one on a spinner. Right, th th that's another thing that's really unique is we're out there tuna fishing and, and trying to catch these tunas, but what happens is that shark will even eat a pelcher. You know what I mean? He, he, he is a, a, a very strange shark. You know, he'll eat a small little bait where, you know, your bull shark ain't gonna swim up and eat a little pelcher. But those, those sandbars have become so prevalent around here that you know, you're, you're gonna accidentally catch one on a spinning rod, and which I did. And uh, I, normally, I'll try to pop them off because it's a lot of work to lift up an animal that big on a little 20 pound Yeah, yeah, on you, a don't 20 have, pound you don't outfit. have any pool power. Uh -uh. So you're, you're set up for fish that run and you can, they'll run back away and then slowly work them back up. Not, that's not really set up for straight up and down. Mm -hmm. Hammer down drag. Raced oh. up to the surface. Floating. That's the telltale sign of he a Warsaw. He was not floating. That's the telltale sign of a Warsaw. They start floating up. That's the fighting pattern. They try to fool you out, trick you. All these big shark bites. Such a head shaker. <laughs> <laughs>
smaller Warsaw shake their head. <laughs> a, little uh -huh. bit more, a little bit more than the big ones. <laughs> what you got, buddy? Just floating? Saltwater fish. One of our, in the spirit of Sandbar Sunday, let's keep it rolling. Well, cooperative animal though. You know, could have been worse. Give me a snaggle too. Why couldn't I catch one that side on the spinning rod? So oh, somebody looky. tried. Teeth. Got some teeth. <clears throat> Come on. Sit and swim, buddy. You know, it's not a slam dunk all the time. That ocean is, uh, you, you look at the conditions, you can tell that it's not the moving water you want. It didn't have the fish we were after. The tunas that we did get up were kind of small. We still obviously bent the pole and, and we caught some sharks and I kept promising you you'd catch a Warsaw just to keep you fired up. You never know what's gonna happen. You know, the more days you spend out there, the more you learn, the more you see. No sharks, listen, to somebody who lives up in the north, Man, they, they, they've, they've never seen, only in the movies, or you know what I'm saying? They've never uh, had a chance to see those fish and, and realize what we're dealing with. Um, day in and day out. When it comes to the sharks. So it's cool to catch them and show the folks. And I'll keep dropping baits down for that Warsaw. One day I'll actually get one. Yeah, man. So I'm just getting this ready for the last Warsaw hole I'm gonna put Scott on before we go home. He don't believe me. Okay, you can't catch him if you don't fish for him. I'm all sandbarred out. Had a long day at the sandbar. You, you, know. you know how it is around five o'clock on the sandbar. All you want to do is go home. Yep, yeah, enough Get on sun. the couch. Enough sun and fun.